So now that we have all these tools available to us, let's actually get into how the machine really works. So here I have this start method, and I have a breakpoint line on 21. I'm going to press debug, and it's going to pause time when 21 uh, hits. And we're actually going to see if we can predict how this code runs. Okay, so we're starting. I'm on line 21. Obviously, it's just going to jump down. Nothing really interesting happens till line 27, right? So let's get there. All right. So it's real important to try to now predict where you think the code is going to go and see if you can follow the execution uh, cursor around without ever being wrong. Um, so let's see what happens next. I have this for loop. So, okay, great. I have a loop. That probably means it's going to loop over this for as many uh, characters as there are in this alphabet array. Sure enough, that's what it's going to do. Okay, this is a little more interesting though. I have an if statement, but in my if statement, I have a lot of stuff to read. Now let's break that down piece by piece. We have the if, we have the parenthetical that we're used to seeing. Let's see if we can't find his other matching parenthetical. It's actually all the way over here, right? You can see how Android Studio actually highlights those pieces for us. Wow, okay, so that's a lot of stuff inside there. The way that this code gets run is it goes from the inside out. So the first thing we have here is a method call has letter. Sure enough, there's a character there, and sure enough, there is a character on the other side. So this is actually a method call inside of here with two variables being passed in as parameters. Okay, if it's a method call, what does that mean? Well, it means it's going to jump from here to that method. Let's see if we can't find that. Here it is. Great. So I'm going to assume that line 53 is what's going to happen if I press play. Sure enough, we jump to 53. All right, so if we end up going through this, we have now a while loop. Now, a while loop with a not found means that, okay, as long as this boolean is false, this loop should continue. All right, I'm going to step through here, and I'm going to see, okay, we have an if statement. If a letter is equal to the position sentence, okay, so let's take a look at what those things are. We have position equals zero a sentence, so the first piece of this, it's a T, okay, um, and a letter is equal to A. Um, all right, so this is not going to run. That's my prediction. Let's see if I'm right. Sure enough, I'm right. Now we have an else if position equals the length minus one of sentence. Um, let's see. Um, well, the sentence is uh, pretty long. It's 37, and position's at zero definitely don't think that that's going to run. So we can just skip over that. Sure enough, we're in the else bracket now, and position is now going to be incremented by 1. Okay, position 0, position 1. Great. So this is probably going to continue until it gets through the whole piece. I don't want to wait around that long, so let's just press play. Uh, and sure enough, we're back into the has letter piece again, because it's gone through the code up here. So this process of seeing how things can jump from one place all the way to another place, and then using a return statement, go back to its uh, original location, is real important. If you're able to track where your code is going to move without actually having to run the debugger, especially for method calls, you'll have a much easier time figuring out what stuff gets run when.